the Great Society was revolutionary. When you look back and think of what America was like before these programs were adopted, life was very different. There was an outbreak of hope across this country. And it was quixotic, it was kind of Arturian, this idea of might for right. These things are all resonating to this day. I really don't know where I'd be without Top Corps. Thank God for Medicare. I can feel worthy. I can be great. I think many of the Great Society programs were so successful and had an impact on so many of our lives in an overwhelmingly positive way. We have to question, why did we move away from that? In the 60s was a time when the old culture kind of broke open. The country was now receptive to a burst of energy, of progressive reform. The country wanted to heal itself, to be healed, by joining in social change efforts. And Johnson, when he became president, he was committed to the idea of something he grandly called the Great Society. Will you join in the battle to build the Great Society, to prove that our material progress is only the foundation on which we will build a richer life of mind and spirit. The Great Society was a cluster of, of projects undertaken by the president. He saw racial discrimination and he saw poverty as moral issues, not just as political issues. And he knew that what the country had gone through and where we were in the 60s was not where we needed to be. In 1964, Johnson and the civil rights groups managed to pass the first major civil rights legislation. And it was the first comprehensive civil rights legislation in the United States since 1875. The Civil Rights Act said public accommodations have to be available to everybody no discrimination on the basis of race. So with one fell swoop, the Great Society wiped out all the whites-only signs. In 1965, the president proposed the Voting Rights Act. The assumption was that everybody could vote, but everybody being able to vote did not mean that everybody's vote was counted or even accepted. Of course, until that Voting Rights Act, there were all sorts of restrictions on black voting across the South, be it poll taxes or be it uh, literacy tests. This ended discrimination in voting, opened up voting to all Americans. Of course, when you assure people that they can vote, they then want to run. Before the Voting Rights Act, there were about 300 elected black officials in this United States. Today, there are over 10,000. I ran for the school board, and I'll always feel that my becoming the first African-American elected to public office in Travis County was an outgrowth of the concern and the commitment that people had. I think President Johnson was the best president for black people that there's been in this country. And I say that with all due respect to President Lincoln, whom I revere. Johnson did what he did because in his heart, it heard him that there were so many poor people. This administration today, here and now, declares unconditional war on poverty in America. The war on poverty was part of this idea that you have not a handout, but a hand up. In the 60s, it was hard scrabble for a lot of folks. And what we saw with the war on poverty was, for a lot of people, it just meant jobs. Johnson often said that he wanted to make tax eaters into taxpayers. What it's saying is, we're going to bring the less affluent into the mainstream of the society. When Lyndon Johnson became president, the poverty rate was about 22%. When he left office five years later, the poverty rate was 13%. That decline is the greatest one-time reduction in poverty in the history of this country.
Maybe the greatest impact that uh, the Great Society had has been the uh, Medicare program. In the 60s, there was no health care coverage provided by corporations. People who reached the age of 65 did not have guaranteed health insurance. And of course, Medicare now has tens of millions of people in it. I had just turned 65 in January. In May, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Thank God I had Medicare. It made all the difference in the world. And, you know, I would have been devastated financially had Medicare not been there. It is one of the most popular social programs in the country's history, and it seems like a humane and generous act of the society. You know, most presidents are just happy to have one or two bits of uh, legislation that endure, that have a historical resonance to it. Johnson slammed out bill after bill, act after act. In education alone, he proposed legislation to provide scholarships, grants, and work-study programs for college students. That legislation today provides the resources for 60% of the people that are in college in the United States of America. I got the maximum amount any person could get to go to college. I certainly would not have been able to attend school without this type of help. The whole concept of those programs was that the decision ought to be based on whether you had the ability to excel, not whether your daddy had a big, thick wallet. And then Head Start. Head Start is an exciting experience for me to know that hundreds of thousands of children are being given the devotion and attention they need. Head Start was a program to allow impoverished children to begin educational training. I remember coming home one day, actually it was the first day of kindergarten, and telling my mom, everybody loves me. And you know, she was just so enthused. And I really think it's attributable to my experience with Head Start because it helped to build the confidence so that when I did start school, I was ready and, and able to learn and able to work with other children. When they get a chance to go to school earlier, the assumption is that the next level of education is going to improve. They keep coming all day, 350 youngsters with one thing in common the opening of the Rodman Job Corps Center at New Bedford, Massachusetts. The Job Corps was part of the war on poverty. At the time, there were hundreds of thousands of men and women with no real job opportunities. Johnson wants this Job Corps as a place people can train, come away with skills. This was legislation that was offering work to young men and women, and I think it's been pretty successful. It's taught me and several people that I've known that have gone out there a lot of independence. A lot of kids in inner city are great. They have great talents, but they don't know how to bring it out of themselves. And that's one thing Job Corps does. It brings the good out of people. Lyndon Johnson created the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which is the source of public radio and public television, hundreds of stations all over the country created the National Endowment for the Arts and Humanities. I think for America, it was a revolutionary idea to have government support for the arts. As the artistic director of jazz at Lincoln Center, we have worked with the National Endowment for the Arts, the Endowment for the Humanities, in so many ways, with so many programs, which has touched hundreds of thousands of kids all over our country. I would hate to imagine a world where there wasn't funding of the arts. The National Geographic calls Lyndon Johnson the nation's greatest environmental president. I think Lady Bird Johnson was one of the great first ladies in American history. She was the environmental first lady, and in many ways there was a co-presidency about keeping America beautiful and clean. Seminal was the Wilderness Act of 1964, which preserved large patches of wild America. There's also the Clean Air, Clean River, Clean Waters Act. Of all the reckless devastations of our national heritage, none is really more shameful than the continued poisoning of our rivers and our air. He said that every administration has to have an environmental record. And since Johnson, we're all trying to match what he was able to accomplish in that regard. America is always best when it is operating close to its founding ideals. Among those founding ideals is that it's our country, and we should care about it, and we should take care of it. Indian Bill of Rights. Fair housing, 
urban mass transit. One of the wonders of Lyndon Johnson was that he was looking at the future. It's the protocol that Lyndon Johnson created that we're living in. In a way, America today, we are all the beneficiaries of Johnson's vision. College work study. Kennedy Cultural Center. Age Discrimination Act. The question that people have is, how do we get back to such a progressive agenda? They can look to the past to see examples. A Appalachia. School breakfasts. Scenic rivers and trails. We have stellar moments in the history of our country. We can experience that same euphoria by seeking things that we haven't done, that are there for us, and we're going to do that. The best of American life cries for it. I hope it may be said uh, 100 years from now that by working together, we help to make our country more just for all of its people. I believe at least it will be said that we tried.